Hey everyone, this is Rittens, where we write whole worlds. Today we'll dive into the story of the one who dreamt most vibrantly. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the fantasy tale of Isolan, Sanctuary of Dreams. I saw a glimpse of it last night, it's real, I swear, she said, emphasizing her words by shaking her brother violently. Okay, okay, I get it, calm down. She broke free from her grip and took a few steps back. Man, you almost made me spill my milk. Forget the milk, Isolin exists. Almost shouting in excitement, she restlessly balled the sleeves of her nightgown up in her fists. I saw the silver clouds. Rhea. Her brother put his free hand on her shoulder. It's just a dream. You're not a kid anymore. Go get ready for the sermon. Sermon? Wait, no, you don't understand. Rhea. He said authoritatively. Dawn is almost over. Go get ready. She shot her brother a furious glare before turning around and stomping back up the ladder leading to the attic. I'll show him, she mumbled as she aggressively combed her hair and started gathering her things. As she walked towards her wardrobe, a familiar, ornate tome in her bookcase caught her attention. The spine read Myths and Legends, Volume 4, Fables of a Forgotten World. Her fingers gently touched the worn-out cover as she withdrew it from the shelf and placed it on her desk. The book immediately fell open to the pages she had read hundreds, if not thousands, of times already. Isolin, the Dreamer's Sanctuary. These words written in bold surrounded the top of an illustration so breathtaking, Rinder had spent many hours staring at its endless detail. A beautiful castle, beset by whitewashed stone walls, stood in absolute defiance of all laws of nature. Built upon an enormous chunk of rock, it floated right above the surface of the clouds, where the sun and the moon could watch over it and protect it from those who walked the lands below in reverence. Rinder could not stop herself from skimming the pages, so worn by her touch that they barely held onto the leather. Reading of the castle that only appears to those who dream most vibrantly, and even amongst them, only a few people in history claimed to have entered its gilded halls. They spoke of trials that awaited within, beings too magnificent to describe, yet none had passed their tests, and Iselin has remained a mystery forevermore. I saw it last night. It's real. Rinder mumbled as she stared at the illustration in frustration. Rhea, it's time to go, her brother shouted from below, reminding her that she was meant to be doing something. Coming! Unable to focus for the entire day, she kept thinking about the clouds of which she had dreamt, waiting impatiently to be allowed to go back to sleep. Huh? Leaving already? It's not even dark yet. Her brother called after her as she shot up the ladder. Yes, good night. With a soft thud, she closed the hatch of her attic and walked over to the gas lamp to extinguish it. Within seconds, she was ready for bed and forcefully closed her eyes. After five minutes of lying entirely still, her eyes shot open as she groaned in frustration. Let me sleep, she mumbled to herself. Please. After a few hours of tossing and turning, as she got progressively more frustrated at her inability to sleep, she managed to tire herself out enough to enter her own world of dreams. Consciousness slowly drifting, the endless expanse of colors, shapes and figments started to coalesce into a bed of clouds. By the time she noticed where she was, a strong gust of wind almost knocked her off the precipice she was standing on. Adrenaline coursed through her veins as she stumbled backwards, realizing how high up she was. Wait, she said as she brushed her hair out of her face and quickly got back up. She grabbed onto the ledge behind her and pulled herself up to the highest point she could see. With one mighty pull, she threw her legs over the edge and quickly stood up. Isolan. She gasped as she tightly balled her hands into fists. Off in the distance, a large rock floated above the clouds, carrying a magnificent white castle. Holding it in place were several enormous chains, each extending a different direction, one of which was attached to the rock she was standing on. Her heart almost stopped when she saw that, as her blood pumped through her ears. Am I really doing this? Is this real? She thought to herself as she looked at the chain. If I fall... Trying not to look at the clouds, her vision drifted back up to the castle, which gave her courage. 
Without another second of hesitation, she hopped off the rock and landed firmly on the metal link. She could see the clouds through the opening in the chain, so she quickly ran over to the next link and grabbed onto it. Just you wait, all of you. I'll prove everyone wrong. She grit her teeth as she headed up the long path towards Iceland, a resolve fueled by one single thought. Better hit me with all you got, Iceland, because I'm not leaving empty-handed. The climb up to the floating rock that made up the foundation of Iceland got progressively more difficult as the chain led her higher and higher. Come on! Using the last of her strength, Brindir pulled her body up to the edge of the rock, hanging just slightly above the final link of the chain she had climbed. When she felt solid earth beneath her, she collapsed, drawing ragged breaths. The sky above her was so perfectly blue that she found no focus. Forcing herself to look away from the burning sun, she tilted her head backwards to take in the scenery directly above her. From her upside-down position, she saw the enormous white walls that surrounded Iceland, now so close that she could almost touch them. Drawing newfound energy from this, she rolled over and quickly scurried to her feet, almost losing her balance to vertigo as she once again remembered just how high up she was. She quickly grabbed onto the rock wall and began climbing up to where the walls were. You're nothing compared to that chain. Emphasizing her words by pulling herself up, she ignored the burning pain in her arms and forcefully steadied them as they shook violently, allowing her to reach the castle level within minutes. When the climb was over, her arms were so numb she could not lift them above her shoulders anymore. This was of little interest to her, however, as she now stood face to face with the castle which she had wanted to visit since she was old enough to read. Now where's the gate? She said as she looked from left to right. Really? Not even a hint? Why didn't I look for one before? Whatever. Deciding not to linger on her mistake, she arbitrarily decided to turn right and followed the edge of the wall. Various towers of different shapes and sizes decorated the exterior, but none indicated any sort of opening. Even if her arms still had the strength, the walls did not offer any protrusion for her to climb on, forcing her to take the long way around. After walking for what felt like an hour, she finally saw what she was looking for. There you are, she said quietly as a paved road popped into vision after she turned the bend. It seemed to lead all the way to the edge of the floating rock, meaning there had to be an entrance nearby. Deftly hopping down the uneven landscape, she quickly made her way to the road, eagerly following it in the direction it came from, until she suddenly stopped. Are you kidding me? She said as she looked at the heavy, reinforced metal gate, which was lowered, barring her from entry. Rapidly approaching, she could see the courtyard through the grating. Aspen-leaved ivy grew around the gate on the other side, contouring the image of four marble fountains that flanked the large entryway of the castle which lay beyond. Countless flowers dotted the edges of the garden, a spectrum of colors befitting a castle of dreams, adding only to her desire to walk the halls within. Open! Bear yourself. Reveal. Unhinge? Lamenting her limited vocabulary, she grabbed the iron bars of the gate and tried to lift it, when a sourceless voice rang out. Contested within, a visitor seeks passage. Lest the unworthy roam within, we ask of she. Seek you wealth or fame within? This androgynous voice carried a pleasant tone, almost causing Brindir to get lost in it. She shook her head to reaffirm herself before giving the question some thought. I don't seek either. All I want is to live the dream. See that which no waking eye can see. She said, remembering the line of the book that entranced her the most. As soon as she finished, a loud clunk rang out through the area. A sound reminiscent of the release of a thousand chains forced her to cover her ears as the gate rapidly lifted out of the way. Stopping as quickly as it started, she stared at the now accessible courtyard. Before taking a single step, she hesitantly asked, May I go in? When no voice answered, she gathered her resolve and crossed the threshold. Not even two steps inside, the loud noise assaulted her again as the gate slammed shut behind her. She immediately spun around, realizing she was now trapped inside as the voice spoke up once more. Walk with resolve, for the way home is now closed. Within these halls sleep those who dream the wakeless night, unable to return. Find your path to the throne as only one works for she, 
abandon expectation or a wakeless dreamer you will be is that a threat brinder shouted out can't you talk like a normal person god so i just have to find the right path to this throne or else i won't wake up as her frustration subsided a slight panic washed over her which she quickly shook off fine by me i'll show all of you after resolving herself she took in the area the dazzling beauty of the garden now somewhat diminished by the looming threat of death she quickly spotted three paths the first led to her left a solid looking wooden door seemed to grant entry to the interior of the wall which she had just followed on the far end of the garden she saw a staircase leading up to an overpass that connected to a balcony further into the castle and in front of her stood the incredible double doors that made up the main entry of Iceland. Hmm, she mumbled to herself, taking a few steps into the garden to get a better view of her options. People that like shitty rhymes usually go for symbolism. Walls? Protection? Safety? No, that's too obvious. She walked through the garden to look at the staircase. So one leads up, one goes back, and one goes forward. Rubbing her temples, she took a few steps back to the main entrance. Can't imagine the throne room being connected to the walls. And the voice tried to scare me away from the main door by telling me the ones who failed sleep there. Oh. Realizing something, she walked up to the large doors and without a second of hesitation, pushed them open. Contrary to her expectations, they moved very lightly, slamming against the walls through only a tiny bit of force. As she confidently stepped inside, the voice returned. The will to face danger and step in head first becomes of she. We wonder, how did she know? I didn't, Brinder said loudly. I'm just not going to let someone tell me what I can and can't do in my own dream. I'll decide that myself. The voice laughed quietly, fading away as it did, until all she was left with was silence. Alright, throne room, she mumbled as she took in the hall. A gilded staircase spiraled to a balcony on the second floor, from which you could see two hallways stretch out. On the ground floor there were a multitude of doors, but they were of little interest to her. Jumping up two steps at once, Brindir ascended the stairs to the second floor. Looking between the two hallways, one of them had an entryway so beautiful it caused her to pause. Chiseled down to the finest detail, a winged horse reared proudly. Its wings followed the curve of the door elegantly, splitting into two. Extending from its feathered wings, a dark type of ivy grew along the trellis beset on either side of the opening, weaving itself through the tips of the wings. Expectantly turning around, she noticed that the other doorway was completely bare and simple. All right, I'm supposed to pick this simple one here to show humility or something, right? She said as she walked towards the statue of the winged horse. Well, I'm not humble. After crossing the threshold, she followed a curved hallway, ignoring the many doors set into it until she came upon a larger room. Decorated with a burgundy carpet, the eastern side led out to a balcony from which she could see the endless cloudscape. A variety of couches, chairs, and miscellaneous furniture lined the western wall. But what really stood out to her was a single chair, messily placed off-center in the room, upon which an old-looking lady sat. Dressed in fineries, her wrinkled face smirked at Brindir as she entered the room. Living through our sleep, each breath we draw resumes us. In this room we cannot die. As she spoke, the doors behind Brindir slammed shut. Turning around, she noticed the writing on the back of the door, which said, When two enter, only one may leave. The old lady's smile bared her yellow teeth, as she said, May eternal life consume us. When two enter, only one may leave? Brindir mumbled as she read the words on the back of the door, completely ignoring the old lady behind her. Yes, in this room we cannot die. Right, bye! Brinder said, interrupting her, and walked straight past her to the door across from the entrance, which opened up without any resistance. Before stepping through the opening, she shouted to the castle itself, Nice try, but I won't fall for your misdirection. After slamming the door shut behind her, she walked through a connecting hallway out onto an overpass that showed the inner courtyard from above. 
Expecting the same level of decadence as the entry courtyard, she hung over the edge of the balcony to take a better look. Rather than the luscious, multicolored flora that made up the entrance, her eyes were met with the decaying remains of what once were plants. Rotting organic matter peeled from the same white walls that made up the entirety of the structure, giving the inner yard a dreary ambience. What caught her attention, however, was a single statue set in the western wall, from which the rot seems to have spread. That's just in bad taste, she mumbled as she took in the helmetless, faceless knight's appearance, holding what appeared to be decapitated heads of the enemies it had slain. Noticing a plaque at the base of the statue, Brinder squinted, but could not read what was on it. Her curiosity peaked, she turned around to the end of the overpass, which split into two staircases, both of them leading down to a half of the courtyard below. What's with this place and giving me choices? She grumbled as she picked the left staircase. Let me guess, she said as she crossed the threshold, after which an iron gate rose from the end of the stairwell she had just descended. <sighs> Figured. Approaching the statue in the center, which was covered in dead ivy, she stepped onto some of its rotting material, which squished unpleasantly underneath her bare feet. Repressing the urge to vomit as best she could, she tried not to think about the tar-like substance that had now firmly lodged itself between her toes, and quickly walked over to the plaque which she could not read from above. The faceless one seeks to claim that which it has not. What, a face? Brinder said with a tone of disgust as she looked over the anguished expressions of the disembodied heads. That's not how any of this works. Oh well. Realizing the futility of looking for reason within this place, she looked around for an exit, but there's no way out? Her voice trailed off as she spun around, leaving black footsteps behind on the white platform upon which the statue stood. <sighs> Fine, she said in frustration, turning her attention back to the night. No face, expressionless emotion? I mean, the heads show plenty of that. At least phrase the plaque like a question. Jeez, and clean this mess up. Wait, as if something clicked in her head, she looked over the dead plants once more. Ah, what you lack is not a face, you lack life. You're hollow. Her arms, still tired from the climb, shook violently as she pulled herself up to the foot of the statue and began climbing up to the chest. When she reached it, she tugged on the plating of the armor, which hinged open like a door, revealing a pathway beyond. There you are. The tunnel was so narrow, Brinder could barely force herself through. Brushing past dirt and grime that had been there for an endless amount of time, her pale nightgown turned dark, and her mood even darker. Legendary beings, trials... Yeah, sure. All I'm seeing is old people and objects with an attitude. As she finished complaining, the path suddenly went up at a very steep angle. Really? More climbing? She took a deep breath to calm herself, and climbed towards the bright light coming from the top of this tunnel. After much huffing and complaining, her dirtied hands grabbed the edge of the floor to which this tunnel led, but she lacked the strength to pull herself up. Forced to use her legs, she shimmied the final bit, kicking off against the back end, which sent her rolling out of the tunnel. Alright, Iceland, what you got next? She spoke in a challenging tone in between ragged breaths, her abs too tired to allow her to sit up. As she laid on the floor, a sudden wave of exhaustion washed over her. Wanting nothing more than to surrender to sleep, she temporarily closed her eyes before they shot back open. No, 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 no. What if I wake up? Forcing her body past her limit, she stood back up and took in the room. She was standing on a checkered, tile floor, of which one tile was missing, revealing the tunnel through which she had entered. Her eyes followed the wall up to a balcony above, with no accessible staircases inside. Across from that one was an identical balcony which flanked a beautiful, stained glass wall in the back of the room, easily five meters in height. And then she saw it. Is that a throne? Set up on an elevated platform near the back of the room, an enormous gilded chair stood in its center. 
Extending to it was a similar, yet more ornate looking, burgundy carpet as she had seen in the entry hall of the castle, which stretched to here all the way from the closed double doors that formed the entrance of this room. Is this it? Have I done it? She said dubiously, trying to look for any hint of trickery, when another voice rang out from behind her. A good question. Have you? A spine-chilling, silky voice spoke out, causing her to spin around. The first thing she saw was the waist of this monstrously large human, who easily stood over three meters in height. The face of this androgynous person was unnaturally pale, as if no blood were running through their veins. Yet their hair was neatly cut at shoulder length, without a single grey hair mixed in the deep brown, which carried a vibrant luster. They would seem like a beautiful, upskilled person, if not for their eyes, which lacked any discernible pupils. Few dream of the realm placed between fantasy and reality. Even fewer enter its grounds, and none have made it to this room. We ask of you, have you done it? Rindir gulped as she staggered back, overwhelmed by the presence of this person, but it did not take her long to reaffirm herself and stared defiantly at the giant. I don't know what your it is supposed to mean, but if you're asking if I made it here, then yes I did. The being cocked their head to the side, causing a strand of hair to fall over their eyes as they looked at her. Curious is the one who sleeps the wakeless dream, unaware of the objective in front of her. Seek you not the throne of Iceland? Well, your gate did tell me to go find that, and I know I said I'm not leaving empty-handed, but I don't really want to carry a throne out. They're heavy. The chair itself is insignificant, but we do not understand. Did you walk these grounds unaware of their implications? This time it was Brindir who cocked her head, confused by the being's confusion. I read about this place in a book about myths and stuff. It was always my favorite story. The castle floating above the clouds, the palace of dreams, and so on. When I saw it in my own dream yesterday, I decided to come take a look today. You chose to appear? Yeah, I mean, it's my dream after all. The castle exemplifies the nature of dreams. Uncontrolled, illogical, and unforgiving. Even amongst the most lucid of dreamers, none could choose to appear. Before they could finish their sentence, Brindir interrupted them. Look, I've said this already and I hate repeating myself. I decide what I can and can't do in my dream. I see your little tests trying to trick me into forgetting what's really going on. She suddenly stopped, causing the being to give her a curious look. Have you reconsidered? No. I'm an idiot. She mumbled as she walked past the giant, straight up to the enormous double doors. Using all of her remaining strength, she pulled at them, but they did not budge, so she gave the being a frustrated look. Care to help me, or is that big body just for show? Taken aback by her irreverence, the being slowly walked to the door and pulled it open for her, when she stepped through, they asked, Where are you going? Follow me if you want, I'm just proving my point, she said without looking back. The old pair made their way through the hall that lay beyond, toward a door set in the right wall. No wonder, she mumbled with a hint of frustration. Hallway, she said imperatively before she opened the door, revealing a hallway beyond. She walked up to the first door on her right and said, Bedroom, what are you... The being started, but Brindir interrupted them once again. No wonder everything was so surprising and magical. Her frustration turned to a slight anger as she stormed into the bedroom and grabbed a wooden chair from near the window. You want me to find the throne? Here. She shoved the plain wooden chair into the center of the room and sat down on it. The moment she did, the being knelt at her feet, their beautiful dark uniform flowing around them as they lowered their head and spoke in a gentle voice. Iceland as a queen once again. I'm actually stupid, Brinder said as she sank her face into her hands. Every single room, everything, creature, being, whatever, it's all been exactly what I wanted from this place. Of course the throne of a dream would be where the ruler sits. My queen through the... Yeah, no, spare me the speech. Instead answer me this. Is this really Iceland? Raising their heads slightly, the pupilless eyes looked directly at hers, and they spoke in a calm voice. You're dreaming, are you not? Or are you awake? Are you awake? Rhea? 
The scenery faded as her brother's voice interrupted her sleep. When she opened her eyes, she felt more tired than she ever had in her life, and a heavy wave of frustration washed over her. Tears of annoyance at the revelation that all of that was simply just another dream trickled down her face as she saw her brother look at her with a worried expression. What? She snapped at him in anger, but he simply gave her a hug. What are you doing? What happened? I'm so glad you're okay, he said, tears rolling down his face. What do you mean? She asked cautiously, feeling her brother freeze up in her arms. Rhea, you've been sleeping for a week. His gentle voice reached her ears, but she could not process his words. A, a week? She muttered, but her brother suddenly let go and got up. Stay here, don't move yet. I'm getting the doctor. Before she could say anything, he had opened the hatch and climbed down the stairs of the attic. Overwhelmed by the rapid change of events, Rindir tried lifting her arms, but they were too heavy, as if she'd been climbing for a whole day. Her entire body ached, but she forced her feet out of the bed and sat up. Using what little bit of strength she had, she stumbled over to her mirror as her heart began beating rapidly. What is happening? She mumbled as she started to feel warm, as if caught in a fever. An inexplicable apprehension stopped her hand as she grabbed the edge of the mirror, her rapidly beating heart somehow speeding up. Not knowing what she was expecting, she gathered her resolve and looked into the mirror. Her brown hair was unkempt, as it was every morning. Her skin was clear, unblemished, and not a sign of dirt from the tunnel was anywhere to be seen. But one thing had changed. What? She mumbled as she looked closely at herself. Her brown eyes no longer contained pupils. Suddenly overcome with a strong thirst, she reached out and grabbed the jug of water, which had not been there before. She looked at the jug, which looked identical to the one they used, as her heart began beating faster again. Looking at the jug in her hands, curiosity got the better of her causing her to force her exhausted body down the ladder and slowly make her way over to the kitchen. Rummaging through the cabinet, she found what she was looking for. The jug her brother readied fresh water in every morning was set upon the uppermost shelf, and was identical to the one she had reached for earlier. How? She mumbled. The surprise made her lightheaded, causing her to lose her balance. She reached behind her to grab onto something, to her surprise, a dining room chair was set right behind her, catching her as she fell, which freaked her out even more. What's happening? After those words left her lips, a familiar, gentle, androgynous voice whispered in her ear. Curious is she who sleeps the wakeless dream. For the Queen of Isolin, a boundary between fantasy and reality need not be. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the story of the one who broke the boundary between fantasy and reality. This tale is actually one of my older ones, as I uploaded it to Instagram almost half a year ago, but uh, hey, better late than never, right? All of the stories you'll find here are part of the world of Amirna, home to the various cultures, races, conflicts and factions, which I'll gladly get into with you over time. This world will play host to the stories, TTRPGs and lore videos I'll do. So subscribe if you want to keep up with that, or if you want to be a part of that, come join our Discord linked below. If you want to read ahead on these stories, you can also check out my Instagram, which is roughly a hundred stories ahead at this point. Alright, I've blubbered enough. I just want to thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you on our Discord. Remember, our world is always open for you. Take care, and see you next time. Bye bye.